Good morning, everyone. I like, I'm happy to see the students at the class again. Uh, last week, I had a chance to attend design conference, design, uh, design con 2020, which was held in uh, Santa Clara of Silicon Valley. The conference is specialized for signal integrity and inter interconnection design society. Um, I have, I was not able to attend the international conference for the last two years because of COVID-19. Um, at this time, I wanted to see all those friends and presentations, especially uh, eight of my master course and PhD course students were presenting their papers. Um, uh, their researches are on HBM and PIM HBM designs to consider machine learning efficiency and power consumption. In addition to that, our students has, had presented machine learning algorithms to design interconnections. I expect that a couple of them may receive the best paper award. Our students present the research contents was very nice and English presentation was really excellent. But to me, that's good honor uh, to see our students' presentation. But I also wanna see other researches from other companies and those industry are related to computer and semiconductor designs and some of them were working at military and space technologies. And I, for the last two and three years, they had another progresses and uh, that was a strong motivation for me to do more hard work and to more innovative researches. Now, uh, today I'm going to come back to the class and continue the class notes. Especially this week, I'm going to continually uh, talk about the meaning of differential mode and common mode. In this class today, uh, I will uh, talk about the common mode generations. Even though uh, we want to sustain differential mode signaling, because there are many advantages of differential signaling, so we want to uh, keep that advantages, but unintentionally sometimes common modes are generated. Even though you are generating a differential mode, it is converted to a common mode. I would say that is being called as common mode, common mode conversion. So it means that even though you generated differential mode, in some cases, you generate common mode, and you know that common mode is very uh, bad uh, source for uh, EMI issues. When does the common mode conversion happens? I would say um, when we have skews between the two lines, you remember that when we are designing differential mode interconnections, two lines are coupled together uh, to form a differential pair. One line is being called as P line, the other line is called as N line. If there is any skew between the P line and N line, we will generate common, oh, sorry, we will generate common mode. And that common mode will be a source of EMI. And sometimes we're gonna see timing margin deduction uh, that is being called as jitter. 
if we have a cheater, we have small timing margin at the receiver. So it is very difficult to keep the right read operation at the receiver. So we want to avoid, we want to avoid common mode as much as possible. And because that is a source of EMI and jitter. When does it happen? What I would emphasize at this moment is that if we have a skew between P line and N line, uh, then we're gonna generate the common mode. One example of a skew is uh, occurred when length of P line, length of P line and length of N line is different. Or sometimes in your uh, output driver of differential mode, if the uh, driver strength of P line and N line is different, then we're gonna generate the driver strength imbalance. Uh, if you have driver strength imbalance, rising time of P line and falling time of P line will be different. Uh, you remember that common mode is average voltage of two lines. However, if the length of two lines are different or if the driver strength has imbalance, we're gonna have common mode. Uh, that means average of your P line and line voltage are not DC level. Sometimes it has fluctuations. But however, when we are designing IO drivers, or PCB line, we have inevitably, we have a situation that we cannot keep the same length of P and N because in PCB, we may have another devices placed on PCB and sometimes we have to put connectors and cables. So there are some sp spaces in PCB that is designated for certain uh, purposes. So you have to go around that area uh, then, for example, let's assume that your PCB trace is uh, turning 90 degree and you have P lines and N lines. Then, because of radius of the circular uh, circle is different and P line and N line length might be different. So there are many situations when we have this kind of skew between P and N lines. So when you are designing high-speed interconnection on your PCB or inside the chip, you got to be carefully control the length difference and driver size differences in your differential line driving. Um, let's take a look at or uh, of this case. Let's assume we have P line voltage VP, N line voltage VN. Let's assume that we have skew between the two lines in a differential pair. Let's assume that uh, length of N and length of P, in, a, in this case, we are assuming that length of N is smaller than length of P. Then voltage level of N will arrive first and it is gonna have transition to negative earlier than P line. Meanwhile, if there is a skew, VP will start to transition with a time difference that is called as T skew. And in this case, you remember that common mode voltage is average of line N and line P. Because the, uh, in the ideal case, the crossing point of P voltage and N voltage should occur at the middle of between two voltage. That is usually reference voltage. That is common mode level. But because N line start transition earlier than P line, we're gonna have negative average. You see that crossing point occurs below a reference voltage, reference voltage. And this triangle will be a source of this triangle, this point that is below reference point, this amount of this uh, 
uh, difference that is voltage difference between reference voltage and this crossing point voltage. And because we have this triangular uh, shape because of this times Q, what I'm saying is this uh, width might be corresponding to TSQ. And this voltage D might be related to uh, this point of crossing voltage uh, compared to reference. After a unit interval, we're gonna see on average common mode level, the positive triangular peak after time interval T. And after another time interval T, we're gonna see a negative uh, common mode peaks. Because you have very good background of mathematics and electrical engineering of signal processing, if you do Fourier transform of this common mode voltage waveform, you're gonna see this kind of a series of discrete spectrum. The first uh, spectrum is generated at clock frequencies that is uh, related to this time interval T. And then because you have triangular shape, this is not sinusoidal wave triangular shape, you're gonna have higher harmonic frequency component up to 10th harmonics. And this uh, shape envelope of this uh, EMI spectrum will be determined by the rising time of this triangular uh, common mode voltage. So once again, I would like to summarize this page by saying that if you have a skew, you're gonna generate EMI spectrum. Even though you wanna take advantage of differential signaling, that is good for suppressing EMI, but if there is any skew between P line and N line, intentionally or unintentionally, if you have a skew or driver size imbalance, you're gonna, you will generate a periodic current, periodic current. And if you have larger skew, you may have more higher uh, current, spec, current periodic current. And this periodic current will be a source of EMI. And if you have this kind of chip or PCB inside computer or smartphone, it will interfere with RF, uh, a free RF radiation spectrum. Sometimes you gonna have less efficiency or some problem on uh, wireless uh, Wi-Fi or LTE, or sometimes in many cases, your computer or smartphone are going to use the RF spectrum to for data transmissions uh, inside your computer or in, inside your smartphone or inside your car, you're gonna be in trouble. So there are strong regulations of EMI to suppress the uh, radiation from your uh, computer or PCB, but if you have a skew, it's gonna be a big problem. Especially sometimes let's assume that your uh, basic free clock frequency is 10 gigahertz or one gigahertz. Sometimes this harmony can reach up to 100 gigahertz. So we really gotta be careful about this uh, common mode generation. Especially why the common mode is so problem because it is conducted through ground. Common mode is being conducted to anywhere. Let's, let's take a look at, let's assume you have a differential mode, A common mode is conducted through the ground. And in your computer or PCB or smartphone, there are huge area of ground because usually to reduce the ground, sub, uh, ground uh, switching noise, ground bounds, you need to reduce the inductance. Then usually we are using huge area of um, ground. Sometimes in automotive environment, whole body of your car can serve as a ground. 
So it has this kind of ground has a large area. That means it, it is becoming very efficient antenna. So ground is usually intended for stabilizing your reference voltage, but sometimes because of this common mode, let's assume that you have common mode current and let's assume your ground has certain inductance and resistance, that means your uh, ground voltage will fluctuate significantly and that is gonna be an uh, EMI source. Especially this ground has large area, so this is gonna be a very efficient antenna. So in conclusion of this page, I would like to repeatedly emphasize the uh, problem of common mode, as that is the first message of my class at this moment. Second strong message is that even though you are sending differential signal, if you unintendedly generate the skew, if you generate skew, it's gonna be a big source of common mode. Um, uh, I am wondering whether Jo Yun sir, are you there? Or oh, Hwang Chan Ong, are you there? Okay, Kim Gyeong Muk, are you there? You don't want to talk to me? Okay, let's check the who are. Uh, Lee Jung Yeon students, are you there? Maybe. Hello. 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 그 인터커넥션 라인을 설계했을 때 저희가 원치 않아도 이제 커먼 모드 그 컨버전이 일어나고 그 길이 차이나 뭐 드라이브 사이즈의 그 불균형 때문에 이런 문제가 발생할 수 있는데 어 이때 이로 인해서 EMI가 발생하게 되고 음그 스큐 때문에 이제 어그 신호의 파형이 약간 시간차를 가지고 전달이 돼서 어 이제 특정 그 주파수 대역에 어 노이즈들이 발생한다고 이해했습니다. 네 맞습니다. 우리가 디퍼런셜 시그널링의 테크 어드밴티지를 그럼 디퍼런셜 시그널링의 일번 장점은 뭐죠? 왜 우리가 디퍼런셜 시그널링을 쓰려고 그러죠? 어, 디퍼런셜 시그널링을 사용하게 되면 그 파워 컴, 파워 소모가 적다고 배웠던 것 같습니다. 네, 어, 그것도 있겠지만은 파워 소모가 적다는 건 이제 논란이 조금 있을 수 있고요. 커먼 모드를 유지하기 위해서 보통 전류를 쓰기 때문에 그보다는 버추얼 그라운드를 써서 임피던스 미스매치가 적어서 어, 반사가 적다. 고속 신호 보내는 데더 유리합니다. 근데 에, 스큐 때문에 커먼 모드가 생기면 그 버추얼 그라운드 자체가 흔들리게 됨으로써 그 버추얼 그라운드 자체가 EMI 소스가 된다 이 말씀을 드리겠습니다. 알겠죠? 네, 감사합니다. 네. Um, then I would like to move on to next slide to discuss about the skew sources. Uh, first one is the IO driver strength. Uh, when you are pulling up your voltage levels, probably you're gonna turn on PMOS transistors. When you are pulling down your voltage at the output, probably you're gonna use the NMOS transistors. So you may have PMOS transistors and NMOS transistors, PMOS transistors and MOS transistors. The driving capability of this PMOS transistor and NMOS uh, transistor has to be balanced. That means rising time and T rising time and falling time should be balanced. 
So when you are designing IO drivers, you got to be careful about this uh, driver strength imbalance. And this driving strength is also affected by voltage and um, by temperature and process. In your paper, we are assuming that voltage of your IO driver with CCC is constant. And you assume that all the IO driver are on the same temperature. And sometimes we are neglecting the process variations of IO drivers. For example, in HBM, we have 1,024 IOs. Uh, this kind of assumption may not be valid or effective in many cases. Especially, uh, this voltage source might be a very important uh, consideration in this days of high-speed uh, GPU and DRAM because uh, we are assuming that VCC has the same constant voltage, but actually it has some fluctuations. At the same time, we are assuming that ground voltage is constant, but actually it may have some uh, fluctuations. And this uh, power supply noise and ground fluctuation may will affect driver strength of this PMOS and NMOS transistors. And because of that, it may be generating the common mode. Always, we're gonna have some imbalance, certain amount of imbalance. So, um, so common mode generation is always happen, so, but you have to minimize that amount. So in, in a previous slide, we have this kind of peaks. Um, I mean, this, these frequencies, how many frequencies will be determined by the clock frequencies? Usually that is not our on the control, uh, but uh, this amplitude of this resonance, these peaks may be determined by how much you control the imbalance of IO drivers. Some years ago, I had a chance to talk with uh, uh, IC design companies who is delivering the display driver ICs. But one of his customers, who is the number one market share, uh, shareholder of uh, uh, smartphone in the world, they are complaining of this, some of these harmonic frequencies and it interfere with their um, wireless uh, internet in United States. So we have, but it was very difficult to control the amount of these peaks because the, depending on dry, uh, display size, we have to sustain such an amount of current. But one solution we suggest them is to change uh, clock frequencies of their processing, then position of this peaks can move around to avoid uh, interference with RF communication frequencies. So number one uh, consideration of skew sources for common mode generation is IO size imbalance. And second source could be termination imbalance. When we have a P line and N line, we usually put the series resistance to avoid any deflections at the receiver size. Uh, we usually assuming this is old mode uh, impedance, but this one, one, two may not be the same. So reflections at P line and reflections at N line might have some differences. Difference always means that we're gonna have some a common mode when we have reflections. So imbalance always are creating the common mode because average level is different because of the uh, difference of reflections at P line and N line. So termination imbalance is also on consideration when we are designing um, uh, high speed IOs. This termination imbalance may occur also process and temperature and voltages. And also sometimes we are putting some EST capacitor. 
Uh, we are not going to discuss very details at this moment, but every semiconductor chip I.O. has to have some protect protections against uh, ESD. ESD charge may be injected from human body or machine or package, or there are many uh, cases when uh, your socket or your PCB is subject to the EA ESD injection. In those cases, we have to put ESD capacitors uh, usually uh, at uh, this kind of input, and this capacitor may have imbalance, then deflections of uh, P-line and my line might be different. Another case is the line length imbalance. For example, in your PCB, you have GPU here, GPU one here. You may have a GPU two or CPU. You wanna communicate between CPU and GPU. In some case, we are using PX, uh, PCI Express or NV link, or there might be many different type of uh, links. Um, probably Intel has their own uh, high-speed link specification and NVIDIA may have their own uh, uh, high-speed serial link um, specification. But let's assume that we have a DRAM uh, placed between the middle of C GPU and CPU. And then the two lines, two differential pair, uh, two lines in a differential pair has to have some circular uh, curvatures. And because of the uh, radius R1 and R2, and this may be 90 degree, you may be easily, you may be easily calculating the line length difference of L1 and L2. And then it's gonna uh, cause the length skew and it will generate the common mode. In this, another case of uh, R, uh, line length imbalance caused by package. In these days, in high performance uh, uh, semiconductor chips such as CPU and GPU, we are using the uh, BGA type or package or TSV. And then we're gonna use a small size ball to make a connection between the chip to PCB. But in RF devices, or when your I.O. number is small, uh, some low price uh, devices, they are still using the uh, wire bonding. Then, um, usually a chip is uh, placed on here and the PCB is placed where, where then you may have some angles, 45 degree, then, of course, in the same reason as we have a curvature here and the length difference L1, L2, we're going to have length difference uh, between the two wires L1 and L2. Ideally, in a differential pair, if you have two lines, we want to have balance, perfect, uh, perfect balance to take advantage of differential mode. But in their situations, there is no ideal uh, balance. There might be hundreds of reasons that we do not have balance. So because we are engineers, you have to keep those imbalance in a certain range so that uh, skew or, or distortions will be minimized. Uh, a week after next week, we're going to talk a lot about the jitter. Jitter is a timing margin at the reverse receiver uh, side to determine whether it is logically one or zero. And this kind of imbalance will be a big source of jitter. I think the most important uh, uh, problem of this queue is the EMI generation, and that is the interference with RF communication. Second 
important uh, cause of this Q is the jitter. If you have significant jitter, you have very small margin of setup and hold time at the receiver side. It is really difficult to e extend or increase data bandwidth between GPU and memory. Uh, uh, Junior, I saw your eyes are looking at me. Can you shortly summarize this page for me? 네, 교수님께서 이번 페이지에서는 스큐의 원인들에 대해서 설명해 주셨는데 첫 번째로 이제 인풋 아웃풋 드라이버 사이즈 인밸런스가 있는데 이제 시모스 디자인에서 피모스와 에모스를 사용하는데 이 라이딩 타임하고 홀링 타임에 이제 언밸런스가 생기면은 스큐가 발생한다 하셨고 이런 라이딩 타임, 홀링 타임의 이제 볼티지나 온도 그리고 공정이 이제 영향을 미친다고 하셨습니다. 두 번째로는 터미네이션 인블랜스가 있는데 이제 터미네이션의 임피던스가 P라인하고 N라인에서 다를 경우에는 이런 이제 언밸런스 리플렉션들이 발생해서 스퀘어가 발생하고 이제 마지막으로 라인 렌스에 이제 언밸런스가 있을 때 예를 들어 이제 메모리 유닛 사이나 뭐 메모리 유닛과 그, 아, 메모리 유닛과 프로세스 유닛 사이나 이제 프로세스 유닛 사이에 이제 인터커넥션에서 직선이 아니라 이제 곡선으로 연결되었을 때 이제 라인끼리의 이제 반지름의 길이가 이제 그 다리, 곡률이 다르기 때문에 그런 데서 이제 인벌, 인밸런스가 생겨서 스퀘어가 발생할 수 있다고 하셨습니다. 감사하고요. 네. 네, 진짜 감사하고요. 근데 이제 하여튼 제가 꼭 전달하고 싶은 메시지는 이 인밸런 모든 게 완전한 밸런스가 있을 수가 없어요. 이 3차원적인 그 부품 배치 때문에 그래서 그걸 엔지니어링 그 스펙 미만으로 줄여야 되고 그거를 시뮬레이션 통 제품 나가기 전에 시뮬레이션 통해서 그걸 확인을 하게 되는데 어, 두 가지 확인 방법인데 하나는 아이오 파형을 측정해서 지터가 얼마 미만이냐 이거 확인해야 돼요. 근데 그 측정 자체가 안 돼. 요즘은 하이스피드라 프로브 갖다 대는 순간 파형이 찌그러져. 프로브 자체가 인밸런스를 유기하거든요. 그래서 컴퓨터 시뮬레이션의 정확도가 굉장히 중요해졌다. 그래서 이런 거를 우리가 이제 시그널 인터랙티가 하게 되는데 아 김경무 학생 어, 잘 봤습니다. 네, 그런 그런 게 있어요. 측정 자체가 안 되는 거예요. 조금만 프로브 하나 갖춰도 피코 페럿, 뭐 펜토 페럿이 되는데 그 자체가 스큐가 되기 때문에 아, 그런 게또 있습니다. 두 번째는 시스템을 다 장착하고 난 다음에 자동차에 보드를 넣는데 여기서 나오는 하모닉스가 아, 자동차에 와이파이 주파수하고 만나면 자동차가 어, 왜차 바깥에서 와이파이가 잘 되는데 차 안에 들어가면 안 된다. 이 시스템 페일리어가 나요. 근데 이제 이런 걸 사전에 방지하려면 이게 다 만들어 봐야 되는데 너무나 비용이 비싸니까 컴퓨터 시뮬레이션에 대한 그 중요성이 굉장히 증가한다. 근데 이제 서, 반도체 서킷 시뮬레이션도 시간이 많이 걸리지만 이거 3차원적이거든요. 풀 EM 시뮬레이션을 해야 돼요. 그래서 컴퓨터에 굉장히 의존도가 더 크다. 이런 말씀을 드리겠습니다. 근데 또 어려운 거는 뭐 길이만 재면 되는 게 아니라 전압의 영향, 온도 영향, 프로세스까지 다 봐야, PPT까지 다 봐야 되거든요. 그런 이제 코너 시뮬레이션이라고 하는데 그 중에서 요즘 가장 그 문제가 되는 게 파워 서플라이가 이게 흔들리는 거, 그라운드가 흔들리는 거. 우리가 회로로 설계할 때는 파워가 일정 전압이라고 보고 그라운드가 일정 전압이라고 보고 하는데 실제는 그렇지 않다는 거. 어, 이게 어, 중간고사 이후의 메인 주제인데 그래서 어, 이런 지터 EMI 문제가 아, 파워 그라운드와 막 연결이 막 여러 개의 디시플린이 막 연결이 돼 버리는 이런 문제가 요거 하나에서도 우리가 볼 수가 있습니다. Um, now I would like to continue the source of the skew. Skew means the imbalance between P line and N line electrically or physically. When you have computer here, server one, server two, 
in the case of AlphaGo machine learning, they are operating the machine learning algorithm, especially for reinforcement learning. They are doing a lot of uh, parallel computing uh, because of the training and backpropagation process are very suitable for parallel computing because it is basically matrix calculations. So thousands of uh, computers are working together to play on AlphaGo game. Of course, there are also CPU. Or, uh, this could be special. In the server, we have CPU and GPU. And they have to communicate. There might be some controller or uh, server, and they have to communicate each other. And they have to uh, share command as well as data because they have to send calculation result and data for this parallel processing as soon as possible, they may use PCI Express channel. PCI Express can use the copper cables or optical cables. We can use our copper or optical. Optical cable is a uh, uh, or suitable very high frequencies, but we have to convert electrical signal to optical signal. At the receiver side, also we have to convert optical signal to electrical signal. In order to do that, we have to have very good background of optical devices such as photo detector and laser diode. At the same time, you know, we have to know uh, uh, CMOS based drivers uh, circuit as well as interconnections. And one of my former students are now working in a Silicon Valley and he's responsible for this uh, optical uh, interconnections. The, uh, the but disadvantage of this opt optical interconnection is because it takes huge power consumption because we have to convert from electrical signal to optical signal. But still, I think up to 100 gigabps. In some ranges, I'm assuming that kappa may be suitable in a short distance of connection between servers and servers. When you are sending uh, this uh, uh, differential signaling using this um, uh, cable, uh, this is cable, then usually they have twisted cable because they wanna if you are twisting the wires of P and N9, we, we wanna have L1 and L2. This kind of cable is being called as twisted cable. But in practical case, because the, this uh, cable has certain diameters and there are certain limitations of uh, balance between L1 and L2 during the cable manufacturing process, actually L1 is not L2. And it is gonna generate the common mode. And this common mode has to come back to the source through this shield. This is called shield ground. So if you do not have any shield, it's gonna be a big EMI source and crosstalk source. Crosstalk is the voltage coupling to the nearby adjacent uh, cables. If usually we have uh, having uh, many of them are bundled together to form a single cable. So this can also cause a crosstalk. To avoid this common mode radiation on the EMI and crosstalk, we have to make a shield cable. So you have to shield this twist pair with the ground. If you have this kind of shield, your cable will lose the flexibility. When we are using cables, we are assuming that cable is very flexible. So when we are designing these servers, we can easily connect them. But if we have shield cables, uh, it is very difficult to 
expand the cables. Also, the cost will increase. And this shield has certain uh, grid type of wires. So it is not actually perfect uh, ground. It has some inductance and uh, resistance. If you have common mode current combined with resistance and inductance, ground voltage will fluctuate, ground voltage will fluctuate, and this could be an EMI source as well. Now, I'd like to extend these discussions at the, at the end of cable. Let's assume that you have very good shielded cable with a good balance, but however, at the end of your cable, you're gonna have to have PCB. And you may have some uh, GPUs. From cable connection to the GPU connection, there are certain curvatures. And usually that will create length difference between L1 and L2. And in your GPU, the distance between a line and line two may very closely spaced like a micron or 10 micron range. But usually the distance between the two wires in a cable may be 100 micron or millimeter range. So you have to squeeze those uh, wire separation from 100 micrometers or millimeter range to not micrometer range. And that will cause the length difference and it is gonna be a skew source. So uh, I'm still talking about source of skew. Uh, first one is IO drive size imbalance. Second one is the termination imbalance. Third one is line length imbalance. And the fifth one is, I would say, coming from cable. Another type of uh, imbalance queue that I would like to emphasize at this moment is the parasitic effect. Let's assume that you have a metal, oh, I'm sorry, metal subject near a, a one line. Let's assume this is a P line and this is N line. You may have some metal structure near the a P line, then maybe coming from via, pad, and bow. All are all of these are metallic structure to make a connection between chip to PCB, uh, PCB to package and package to cable and so on. Because all of our devices in computer such as CPU, GPU, and memory cannot be placed at a single point. We have to separate them and they have to place in a separate position in your PCB and computer because they need a separate processing and they need separate um, packaging and they may have separate uh, power supply. So spatially, uh, you know, spatially we are placing um, uh, those devices in a separate places. Then because of that, we always have to have some interconnection structures. And all of this has metallic structure. Metallic structure is good to combine electromagnetic field between signal uh, and ground. So we assume probably in our whole lives, our 80, 99% of our interconnection could be made of metal. If you have uh, this kind of metallic structure near a P, we're gonna have plastic capacitance. You remember that if you have interconnection, if you have capacitance, you're gonna have negative reflections. If you have inductance, we're gonna have positive reflections. That was the subject of our class for the about two or three weeks ago. So some of these signals at the P line will be reflected and this line may have less, uh, less effect by this metal plastics. So it may not have that kind of reflections. So once again, because of this plastics, we may have some deflections at a line, but the other line does not have any reflection. That means the 
average voltage of PN and N9 may be not a constant anymore. It may have certain uh, uh, voltage. And this kind of reflection occurs whenever we have transitions. And this is another source of skew and common mode. Let's assume in your PCB design, you have some ground void. That means in this section, you do not have ground. So in this section, we, uh, we may have uh, old mode impedance and old mode impedance at the left side of transmission line on the right side of transmission line. We are assuming old mode impedance may be different. And however, uh, when we are defining old mode and even mode, we assume that ground, both of this line has a ground, but in this case, one line does not have ground. So this is imbalanced structure. So because this is imbalanced structure, we cannot define all the mode impedance and even mode impedance. All of the basic theory of differential mode signaling is not valid anymore. And because of this interconnection imbalance, because of parasitics and ground, uh, it will cause the um, common mode uh, generation. Uh, Jonghyun, can you summarize a little bit about this page? 네, 교수님. 그 바로 전 페이지에서는 이제 잠깐 전 페이지 좀 보여주실 수 있을까요? 네. 감사합니다. 이제 P와 P 라인과 N 라인 상에서 이제 전기적 물리적 차이를 스큐라고 하는데 알파고 같은 경우에 이제 다양한 병렬 계산을 위해 어, 다양한 CPU와 GPU와 통신을 하게 됩니다. 이때 어, 되게 빠르게 통신을 해야 돼서 100기가 BPS 이상으로 통신을 하는데 옵티컬 라인의 경우에는 많은 파워 소모가 있어서 구리선을 이용하는 경우가 많다고 하셨습니다. 그리고 이제 최대한 P 라인과 N 라인의 길이를 맞춰주기 위해서 트위스티드 케이블이라는 것을 도입을 했는데 실제로는 이상적으로 두 길이를 맞출 수가 없어서 커먼 모드 제너레이션이 발생을 하고 때문에 EMI와 크로스톡이 발생을 하게 됩니다. 이를 최대한 방지하기 위해서 실드 그라운드를 해준다고 알려주셨습니다. 하지만 이때 이 실드 그라운드를 도입을 하는 과정에서 케이블의 플렉스빌리티가 중요하게 되었고 때문에 코스트 또한 좀더 비싸지는 단점이 단점이라고 받아들였는데 그런 트레이드 오프 관계가 있음을 배웠습니다. 네, 제 1번 메시지는 네. 케이블이 커먼 모드 제너레이션의 큰 소스가 된다. 이게 아. 되겠습니다. 케이블이 네. 왜 중요하냐면 길이가 길어가지고 이 인밸런스가 많이 생기는 게 있는데 서버 혼자서 일을 못하니까 서로 연결을 해야 돼. 그러니까 이런 문제가 계속 생, 생기고 앞으로도 계속돼. 컴퓨터를 손톱만한 칩 하나로 모든 알파고 계산을 할 정도로 할수 있는 시대가 오기 전까지는 근데 언제 수업에도 얘기했지만 할수 있다고 주장하는 게 양자 컴퓨팅인데 양자 컴퓨팅도 계산만 하면 뭐예요? 다른 사람한테 전달을 해야 되잖아 내가 이 스마트폰으로 양자 컴퓨팅 뭐 계산해도 암호 계산해도 나한테 와야 되잖아 네, 맞습니다. 그래서 이 케이블이 또 영원히 가는 숙제다 아, 이런 말씀을 또 드리겠습니다. 케이블 된 굉장히 로우 코스트 값싼 그냥 꽂으면 되는 것 같은데 여기도 수많은 고민과 이런 게 있다 이 말씀을 드리고요. 여기 아래 부분 8번과 9번 간단히 요약해 주세요. 네, 그리고 이제 음, 이 P 라인과 N 라인에 최대한 어, 파워와 같은 소스를 분리하기 위해 B와 패드 볼 같은 것을 인터페이스로 넣는데 이 P N 라인을 메탈이 인접하게 되면서 페러스틱 카페시턴스가 발생을 합니다. 그 때문에 이제 어, 저번에 배웠듯이 카페시터가 발생, 카페시턴스 때문에 이 왜곡이 생기고 그것이 이제 P 라인 쪽에 반사 개수를 그러니까 0이 아니게 만들면서 반사가 발생을 해서 P와 N 라인의 차이가 생깁니다. 
때문에 커먼 모드 그 제너레이션이 발생해 이제 또 EMI나 크로스토 이슈를 발생할 수 있음을 배웠습니다. 네. 그리고 네, 그라운드 쪽에 네. 그라운드 쪽에서 인더프런스 네 맞습니다. 두 라인이 밸런싱으로 쫙 가야 되는데 옆에 누가 붙으면 이게 파라스틱인데 물리적으로 옆에 붙어도 두 라인에 똑같이 붙을 수가 없으니까 이게 또 파라스틱을 만듭니다. 그러니까 세상에 이상은 없다. 근데 엔지니어링은 그 이상을 그 허용 범위 내에서 우리가 컨트롤 해야 된다. 이런 말씀을 드리고 허용 범위 내에서 컨트롤을 하려면 이제 확인을 해야 되는데 첫 번째가 굉장히 복합적이다. 여기서 간단하게 길이에 파라스틱으로 했지만 실제 문제는 파워 서플라이 노이즈까지 막 연결이 되고 이러니까 어, 되게 어렵다. 이렇게 말씀을 드리고 그래서 이제 어, 잘 그러니까 만들어 보고 이거 해볼 수 있는 문제가 아닐까 만, 맨날 이것만 만들어 볼수 없으니까 시뮬레이션으로 해야 되니까 모델링 시뮬레이션이 굉장히 중요해졌다 아, 이게 컴퓨터도 마찬가지고 반도체도 마찬가지고 그렇습니다 세 번째는 뭐 이거 해갖고 시뮬레이션으로 했더니 잘했어 뭐 워낙 툴이 좋으니까 아, 그런데 어 그래서 지터나 EMI가 스펙을 넘어서 그럼 줄여야 되는데 원인을 찾아야 될거 아니에요. 그죠? 그 원인 찾을 때이 물리적인 언더스탠딩이 잘 있어야 되지 않겠나. 이게 파라스틱 어디서 온 건지 길이에서 온 건지 온도 차이에서 케이블도 또 길잖아요. 그럼 케이블이 길면 100개의 케이블이 똑같은 온도가 아니야. 그 온도 공조 시스템에서 온도가 달라지면 또 다이렉트리 컨스턴트가 달라지고 뭐 온갖 생길 수 있는 게다 생기는 되는 것 같습니다. 오케이, okay. uh, let's continue this uh, imbalance issue. Uh, let's assume that we have P line and N line. Let's assume that we have another adjacent line. Uh, then the distance between uh, this line and P line that is going to generate the C1 capacitance. And also between the plastic capacitance between the line and N line may be different, then we may have different uh, capacitance. Let's assume that this is clock line, and let's assume that this is the pair, differential pair. And clock line is very noisy uh, transition and very strong EMI spectrums, clock, and the coupling of this clock noise coupling to the PN9 and N9 will be different because of capacitance size difference. And because of that, we can we will generate the common mode. And again, this is common mode is a source of EMI and jitter. Now, uh, let's talk, I would like to shortly talk about the relationship Uh, between common mode and EMI. And the effect of this common mode to jitter will be covered at, after midterm exam. And we're gonna uh, talk about that very extensively. And once again, I would say this could be a source of jitter as well as EMI. And I, we are going to talk about more details about jitter uh, uh, about two weeks later. And now we are going to talk about EMI. This is more like a system issues. Usually we discover the EMI issues when we are integrating whole the system into a system. So when we are making the automotive vehicles, we may have certain uh, high-speed uh, digital boards such as AI machine learning PCB and autopilot PCB or infotainment PCBs. And those infotainment PCB or, or machine learning PCB may have some common mode and it can generate the EMI. When you are integrating those uh, PCBs into your car, you may have certain problem in your car. So usually this e EMI problem is discovered when you are doing the system integrations. So because of that, EMI has very large cost increase and very difficult engineering resources are needed. Now let's talk about uh, EMI. Let's assume that 
we have some skew between the P and N line and we can, we have common mode. Let's assume that we have a common mode. And let's assume that in your PCB, you have some ground via ground cavity. And please remember that this common mode current has to go back to the source through the ground. And if you have this ground cavity, let's assume that in, in this area, you have two lines, but you do not have ground underneath. And because of that, your common mode current has goes around this uh, ground cavity and this length will increase, a common mode length will increase. And this length is becoming on loop antenna. Loop antenna is a very important source of EMI. So this kind of EMI occurs in a range of 100 megahertz. Let's assume that you have a common mode current and who has spectrum of around 100 megahertz range. And if you have this kind of cavity, you have spectrum multiplied by loop antenna efficiency you're gonna generate the EMI that is very efficient around 100 megahertz. If you, your uh, common mode current has gigahertz range, then this common mode, common mode current is generating an electromagnetic wave that is traveling along the cavity and deflection. So this is kind of circuit theory, but here is the, we have uh, electromagnetic field analysis are needed. Then this kind of high frequency signal will propagate along this cavity and will be deflected at the end by a short termination and come back. So it is gonna generate the resonances. Here, if we have a resonances that is coming from this loop inductance and the parasitic capacitance between the two edges and those resonances are near the 100 gigahertz. But this cavity resonance is usually occurs around 1 to 100 gigahertz. And this ground cavity is becoming cavity antenna. Heyon, are you still there or are you at home? Okay. Uh, Hyunwoo, can you uh, uh, summarize this page for me? 네, 교수님 잘 들리시나요? 네. 어, 우선 P 라인이랑 L 라인에 각각 스큐가 있어서 커먼 모드가 발생했다. 가정으로 뭘 시작했고 상황 같은 경우는 지금 P 라인과 L 라인이 있고 그 아래 그라운드 라인 중에 이제 슬롯이 있어서 그 리턴 패스가 직선으로 가지 못하고 그 슬롯을 돌아서 가게 돼서 인덕턴스가 늘어나는 상황이고 로우 프리퀀시에서는 이런 커먼 모드 커런트 루프가 루프 안테나의 역할을 감당하면서 이제 EMI 이슈를 발생시키고 이 때문에 시그널 아, 시스템 인티그리티가 떨어지는 영향이 있고 로우 프리퀀시에서는 이제 슬롯 사이의 페라스틱 캐페시턴스랑 루프 인터턴스에 의해 레조넌스가 발생하면서 캐비티 안테나로 동작을 해서 이 또한 EMI를 발생시켜서 시스템 인티그리티를 하락시킨다고 이해했습니다. 네 맞습니다. 그러니까 이제 핵심은 커먼 모드는 어디로 흐르냐면 커먼 모드는 두개 P와 N 라인 사이에 같이 흐르니까 반드시 그라운드로 돌아와야 돼요. 그 그라운드로 돌아오는 거에 이유는 보면 회로적으로 기류포의 볼테이지 법칙 때문에 커런트 법칙 때문이고 물리적으로 보면 차지 컨서베이션 프린시플 때문에 그런 거 세, 세상에 전자만 있는 게 아니라 전자가 튀어나오면 거기 아이온이 남기 때문에 그런 거고 전자 파 입장에서는 파가 흘러가면 반드시 메탈이 있어야 그 필드를 갖추고 한쪽 메탈에는 들어가는 전류 반도 쪽에는 마이너스 전류 그래서 물리적으로 
차지 컨서베이션 그 양자적이든 전기적이든 캐피스턴스는 차지 컨서베이션 프린시프를 만족하기 위해서 어 는 반드시 커먼 모드가 돌아와야 되는데 이 커먼 모드 돌아오는 길에 이렇게 구멍만 하나 놔도 이게 안테나가 돼서 이게 만약 큰 소스가 되더라 아, 그런 얘기입니다. Another, uh, I'd like to uh, continue my discussions on uh, common mode generation. One is a case, you know, that occurs in a chassis. The other one is probably automotive vehicles. Um, let's assume that we have P and cable. If there is uh, imbalance, we're gonna generate a skew, and skew will create a um, common mode. This has been the steady uh, statement of our class today. Now, this common mode current has to go back to the source by ground path. In this case, I'm assuming that this is computer. So computer body can solve as a shash. And usually this, sometimes this can uh, solve as a ground. Let's assume we have a PCB1 and PCB1 ground is connected to shash and all this wire have some uh, inductance. Ground PCB has the solid ground plane metal and shash has metal, so we have parasitic capacitance. Let's assume that I have a second PCB located near the uh, PCB1, probably PCB1 could be a uh, CPU board and PCB2 can be a GPU board or memory board. And they are exchanging data using the differential pair P and N. If they have imbalance, it will create the common mode return current. And if we, we do not have shielded cable, uh, in the case of shielded cable, common mode current may come back. Uh, if you have shielded cable, the return current may, a uh, common mode current may come back to the uh, PCB1 through the ground shield. Uh, but a detail about that return current path of common mode will be discussed in at the end of class, uh, class at the end of June. It is heavily frequency dependent. But at this moment, at the low frequency, like less than uh, megahertz, this return current, the common mode current goes, will go conducted through this grounding wire of PCB2 and shash, and we will come back to the ground of PCB1 through this grounding wire. So we have in the shash may have certain resistance and inductance and the connection between PCB ground to shash will have series inductance and parallel capacitance. Because of this path, it will have certain resonances. This return current path will solve have certain resonances. Let's assume that your common mode current has certain spectrum and your impedance of your ground may have certain resonances. If you have overlap of common mode current and ground impedance, you're gonna have large uh, EMI spectrum at the certain uh, frequencies. So in order to uh, control EMI, you have to know what is the spectrum of common mode current. And at the same time, you have to be able to calculate ground impedance of your return current path. And by having multiplying these two, we can estimate the EMI spectrum. So what I am saying at this moment is that if you have common mode, it has come back. And usually this charge will solve as a uh, return current path. And uh, this charge is becoming an EMI source. Similarly, in an automotive vehicle, you have 
source PCB and receiver PCB, and you may have two uh, differential pairs, uh, two differential, uh, two lines in a differential pair P and N line. If there is a skew, and let's assume that your source PCB is grounded to your chassis body of your car, and the ground of PCB2 is connected to the chassis of your car, then your whole body of your car is becoming path of common mode current. And this ground uh, chassis of your car may have certain resistance and inductance, and of course the parasitic capacitance. And it is becoming large EMI source. In addition to that, it is becoming a crosstalk source. Let's assume that you have another computer and another computer and they have the uh, same uh, differential pairs. This common mode current, if that we have a common mode current, ground voltage will fluctuate and this ground voltage will be affecting the data uh, eye diagram pattern at the receiver side. So system system, uh, interference will occur because of this common return current path of common mode current. Um, Jonghyun, uh, would you summarize this page for me? Yes, yeah, sir. Now, uh, the other one is 네, 결국에 커머 <웃음> 결국 EMI 원인이 되는 게 인밸런스의 란 스큐 발생인데 네, PCB 상에서 어, 두 PCB 간 전류가 흐르는데 그 과정에 다시 리턴 패스로 전류가 가는 과정에서 이제 이 인덕터와 커패스터 때문에 레조넌스가 발생을 합니다. 근데 이 리턴 패스가 샤시나 자동차의 경우 이제 아래쪽에 리턴 패스가 형성이 되는데 그두 가지 경우에 대해서 레조넌스가 발생을 하고 이게 결국 EMI의 원인이 된다고 이해를 했습니다. 네, 그래서 커먼 모드는 반드시 돌아와야 되기 때문에 근데 나중에 우리가 저 어, 6월쯤 강의하겠지만 이게 그 되돌아오는 길이 굉장히 많아요. 주파수에 따라서 막 달라져요. 근데 아무런 생각 없이 PCB 그라운드 시켜 놓으면 자동차 샤시나 컴퓨터에 글로 돌아와요. 그래갖고 샤시 자체를 전압을 측정해 보면 마이크로볼트, 밀리볼트 막 떠요. 그게 메탈이 사, 크잖아요. 그게 이제 안테나가 돼버리고 또 다른 컴퓨터나 다른 케이블에 이 커먼 왜냐면 그라운드를 쉬어 하니까. 네. 그래서 이 EMI나 크로스톡 입장에서 커먼 모드가 쥐약이다. 디퍼런셜 모드는 하이 스피드엔 좋다. 네. 그렇게 해야 되겠습니다. 네, 세상에 공짜는 없습니다. 디퍼런셜로 하면 커먼 모드를 유지해야 돼요. 그래서 DC 커런트 패스가 생겨서 파워 소모가 많아지고 IO 개수가 두 배가 되고 뭐 그런 게 있겠습니다. 나, um, so to reduce common so I would like to discuss about reduction of common mode. So one solution to avoid EMI and crosstalk is to reduction of common mode. So in order to reduce the common mode, we want to minimize the imbalance of two lines, driver strengths and interconnection, plastics, and so on. But now, let's assume that we already have common mode, inevitably. Then how are we going to reduce EMI and crosstalk? This is the subject of this slide. One possible way of to do that is the place ground as close as possible it will reduce it will reduce loop size and it will reduce antenna efficiency
what I would like to talk about that. Let's assume we have P line and N line, and we assume that we have skew, and it will create the common mode current, and it can create the EMI and crosstalk. Then one solution, expensive solution, is to put ground metal nearby on the left side and the right side. And then common mode will be come back to the source through these shield lines. So in the conventional PCB, you have P line and line. In this case, you have P line, N line, and ground line, and ground line. And this ground line has to be connected to ground. So it is very expensive solution because we have expensive uh, solution because we have more metals and we have to make a connection from a ground metal to the uh, ground plane because we wanna have so what is advantage of uh, this, uh, this uh, shielding structure is because if we have another metal here, because the co coupling plastic capacitance between P line and N line will be minimized because we have metal here. And because of the uh, common mode current will be conducted through the shield line, magnetic field generated by P line and N line will be shielded. Ground metal will shield the electric field because electric field will be terminated at the metal surface. If there is a magnetic field, if we have a ground shield metal, opposite current will be in, uh, induced. Then this opposite metal will cancel the magnetic field. That means outside of this shield metal, we're gonna have minimal magnetic field. And by reducing, uh, so common mode current will be conducted back to the source at the adjacent metal, so we can reduce the loop size. And antenna efficiency is depending on loop size. Smaller loop size will minimize the antenna efficiency. In those cases, we will never, uh, conductor current will, will not go through the body charge of your computer or automotive vehicles. It will go through these adjacent metals. So I would say to guarantee the best signal integrity, the most valuable approach is to put ground as close as possible. Second approach is a uh, suggestion is that you have to minimize the ground impedance. That those are subject of our discussion after midterm, but the problem of uh, this kind of approach is that it will have huge amount of cost increase. 현우 한번 요약해 볼래요? 네, 교수님. 어, 이번 장에서는 그 커먼 모드를 막는 방법에 대해서 설명해 주셨는데 첫 번째는 만, 어, 많이 이전부터 말씀해 주셨던 그 길이 인, 길이 인밸런스라든지 아니면 이런 거를 좀 잡아서 커먼 모드에 대한 효과를 좀 줄이는 방법이 있고 두 번째는 이제 플레이스 그라운드를 이용을 해서 각각 P 라인과 N 라인 양쪽의 그라운드를 배치함으로써 루프 사이즈를 줄이게 되고 그 루프 사이즈 줄여듬에 따라서 안테나 효율이 감소하게 되면서 이제 EMI라든지 아니면 크로스톡의 효과를 줄이는 영향을 가지고 있지만 이렇게 각 라인 옆에 그라운드를 배치하는 것은 조금 코스트가 많이 높아져서 각각 설계를 잘 해야 된다고 이해를 했습니다. 네, 그렇습니다. 아, 그래서 이 코스트 인크리스를 줄이 그러니까 인터커넥션 숫자가 두 배나 늘어나잖아요. 디퍼런셜 하면서 두배 늘어나죠. 거기다가 또 커먼 모드까지 하니까 네 배가 늘어나는 거잖아요. 아, 그래서 제가 자꾸 우리 컴퓨터 구조가 3차원적으로 가야 되는 게이 평면적으로 PCB 상에서 라우팅을 늘릴 수가 없어요. 너무 좋은 분 라인을 쓰면 또 저항이 증가해 버리고 파스 캐피스턴스가 증가하고 무어의 법칙하고 비슷한데 그래서 아래 위로 설치하고 비아를 뚫자 비아는 
짧고 거리가 가깝고 수만 개 설치할 수 있으니까 뭐 그런 생각이 여기 들려져 있고 근데 하여튼 최종적인 한계는 컴퓨터와 CPU, GPU가 다르고 메모리가 다르고 스토리지가 다르고 내가 데이터를 생산하는 거는 내가 오늘 강의부터 아이패드지만 이거를 지금, 써, 지금 저장하고 있는 데는 뭐, 뭐 줌회사 어디 서버 어디 캘리포니아 할 수도 있잖아요 그리고 여러분 앞에 돌아가고 많은 인터커넥션이 벌어지기 때문에 미래의 퍼포먼스는 거의 무어의 법칙 때문에 실리콘의 한계는 거의 왔고 인터커넥션에서 좌우된다 이런 생각을 갖고 있고 인터커넥션의 설계의 세 가지 프린시플이 시그널 자각이 해야 된다. 지금 계속 이거 하고 있는 거죠. 일정 전압을 구해주고 그라운드를 잘 설치해야 된다. 그게 이제 토탈리 이번 과목의 핵심이 되겠습니다. So uh, this is a PCB level common mode shield. Second uh, uh, subject I would like to continue at this moment is the common mode loop suppression in at the cable uh, level. So let's assume that you have a, a transmitter and receiver. Uh, if you have a just ground shield, a uh, common mode current will be conducted through this shield. In the cable case, we can use the shielded cable and common mode current will be conducted through this shield cable. And at the end of the cable, this shield is should be grounded to the IO circuit ground and this in, inductance and resistance between ground point of shield and ground point of IO circuit inside chip should have very low impedance. So ground impedance should be extremely, extremely small. That is very practical uh, task when we are designing the interconnections. We are not, usually we are not paying a good attention to the ground of cable shield and on-chip IO drive ground. And those ground are connected using the wire and it may have some inductance. Then when the uh, common mode current is conducted through this inductance, we're gonna have ground voltage fluctuations. Once again, uh, in cable uh, cabling system, uh, ground shields are needed to reduce the EMI uh, problem uh, gener which is generated by common mode. Um, uh, Junior, can I continue this class or is good time to stop and continue next Wednesday, coming Wednesday? Yes. 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 아, 그래도 이 정도에서 멈출까 아니면 더 할까 그 어떻게 준영이 하자는 대로 따를게. 어 다음 시간에 계속하는 게 좋을 것 같아요. 알겠습니다, 알겠습니다. Um, uh, this class, in this class, I wanna give you the basic uh, physics as well as practical uh, examples to make a good connection between the theory. And uh, a practical interconnection engineering. So on coming Wednesday, I'm gonna give you some examples of PCB and cables. And uh, long time ago, I had many measurements. After that, I'm going to talk about crosstalk. At, in this uh, class, I was talking a lot about EMI and we were gonna come back to these EMI issues later class in later classes and we're gonna spend a lot of time to talk about antenna and efficiency, resonances and that kind of stuff. Uh, but next week, I'm going to start to talk about crosstalk and what kind of crosstalk we may have and how to avoid the, those things. Thank you for your kind of attention. And uh, I, I hope you have a good time today. This is Monday. I hope you have a very pleasant and safe week. Thank you for your attention.
I'm going to summarize this class a little bit more in uh, Korean language. Thank you. 자, 그렇습니다. 그, 그래서 제가 어, 이런 게 있습니다. 커먼 모드가 사실 별로 이렇게 디스커션 되는 책도 없고 어, 어, 뭐 그렇습니다. 커먼 모드가 다르게 얘기하면 그라운드로 흐르는 전류인데요. 어, 그러니까 우리가 교과서에서 그라운드에 대한 거는 삐끔 쳐놓고 말지 거기에 어떤 전류가 흐르고 어디로 흐르고 이런 얘기를 잘안 합니다. 그죠? 근데 우리 회로 법칙에 의하면 반드시 가는 전류는 돌아와야 돼요. 네. 네, 그, 그런데 커먼 모드 전류가 흐르는 주가, 그러니까 그라운드로 흐르는 음, 중요한 원인, 전부는 아니겠지만 원하지 않는 고주파 전류가 흐르는 것 중에 하나가 바로 커먼 모드 제너레이션입니다. 특히 커먼 모드 제너레이션이 중요한 이유는 디퍼런셜 모드는 굉장히 하이 스피드 시그널을 보내는 거예요. 그래갖고 하는데 스큐 때문에, 인밸런스 때문에 커먼 모드가 생기면 굉장히 고주파가 온 그라운드를 돌아다니게 돼 있어요. 근데 안테나 이피션시나 크로스톡이나 다 간섭 현상은 다 주파수에 비례합니다. 또는 안테나에 따라서 F 프리퀀시 제곱에 비례하고요. 또 하나는 이 고주파는 발생을 하면 안, 그 무선 통신에 영향을 미쳐요. 왜 무선 통신에 영향을 미치냐면 데이터 레이트가 높게 무선 통신을 하고 안테나 사이즈를 줄이기 위해서 고주파로 가야 돼. 10기가, 100기가 이렇게 가야 되거든요. 근데 거기에 가장 그 만드는 게 바로 하이스피드 디지털 IO에서 커먼 모드가 그걸 만든다. 그런 게 하나가 있고 그 다음에 인터커넥션이 그한 쌍만 있는 게 아니라 수백 대의 컴퓨터가 연결되니까 바로 바로 옆에 연결되는 그것들끼리 케이블 상에서나 PCB 상에서 노이즈가 막 서로 타버리게 되는 거죠. 그 중요한 점. 그래서 또 하나 커먼 모드가 많이 생기는 게 전력전자에서 생깁니다. 어, 전력전자는 우리 수업에서는 안 다룰 예정인데 그것도 할 얘기가 길어요. 전기 자동차에서 어, 모터를 구동하려면 배터리로부터 모터를 구동하려면 DC를 AC로 바꿔주는 그 회로가 있는데 그걸 인버터라고 그럽니다. 그 인버터가 또 3상 회로로 이루어져 있어요. 우리 디퍼런셜은 2상 회로 아니에요. 버추얼 그라운드가 중간에 끼는 건데 전력 전자는 이상하게 3상을 활용을 해요. 그래서 120도, 우리는 180도씩 이상 차이가 나잖아요. 두개 라인이 가니까 디퍼런셜이. 근데 우리는 그럼 왜 삼상으로 안 하냐고 보면 공간적으로 삼상을 밸런싱을 맞출 수가 없어. 삼상이 하려면 여기 세 개가 되는데 PCB는 이렇게 두 개로 놓이지 이세 개를 삼상으로 밸런싱을 맞출 수가 없어. 근데 전력전자는 케이블링을 주로 쓰니까 케이블을 잘 만들면 이렇게 삼상을 120도로 설치하면 이세 개의 와이어 중간 지점에 버추얼 그라운드를 만들 수가 있어요. 근데 이 인버터도 모터를 굴릴 때 스위칭 온앤 오프를 해요. 트랜지스터가 IGBT는 갈륨 나이트라이드나 뭐 실리콘 카바. 그래갖고 여기서 또 스큐가 발생을 해요. 와이어 길이나든가. 그래갖고 커먼 모드가 온 자동차 샤시를 돌아다녀요. 그러니까 커먼 모드가 디지털 통신에서도 생기지 인버터도 생기지. 그래서 커먼 모드와의 싸움이다 이렇게 볼 수도 있어요. 시스템 신뢰성을 높이는 입장. 또 하나. 데이터 레이트를 빨리 컴퓨터끼리 높이는 데는 지터가 문제가 돼요. 지터가 되면 타이밍 맞이. 그건 이제 또 다음 주에 이제 하고 다 다음 주에 계속 얘기를 할 텐데 그렇습니다. 근데 이거 다 커먼 모드를 줄이는 방법은 그라운드를 끼워넣는 거다. 근데 그라운드 끼워넣으려면 잘 끼워넣어야 돼. 주파수에 따라서 이 그림에서 그라운드가 바로 옆으로 들어올 것 같지만 메가헬스나 키로헬스가 되면 일로 안 와요. 이건 저항이 큰 라인이기 때문에. 저항이 적은 라인도 또 돌아와요. 바, 자동차 바디나. 그래서 어, 그라운드가 생각보다 쉽지 않고 눈에 보이지도 않고 주파수에 따라 다르고 소스가 인, 전력전자에서 오느냐, 디지털에서 오느냐, 이, 인밸런스가 PCB에서 오느냐, 패키지에서 오느냐, 칩에서 오느냐에 따라서 패스가 달라요. 그래서 이제 그라운드가 어렵다 이렇게 되겠습니다. 여기까지가 그러니까 어, 디프레이션 라인 시어리 얘기하는 것보다는 좀 두서가 없지만 어, 여러분들한테 실제 세계와 어떻게 연결되는지 한번 얘기해 봤습니다. 예, 여러분 어, 수업 집중해서 감사드리고요.
어, 수요일은 바로 크로스톡으로 넘어갈지 케이블링 얘기를 좀더 할지 좀 고민을 해보겠습니다. 예, 여러분들 수고 많으셨고요. 어, 안전하게 지내시기 바랍니다. 네, 예, 수고 많으셨습니다. 네. 어, 잠깐만요. 여기 누가 질문이 질문으로 채팅으로 남깁니다. 질문이 없어서 네, 다이렉트 메시지로 어, 김경욱 씨가 오셨고 채팅으로 질문 남깁니다. 감사합니다. 접지 설계에서 스타 포지션으로 만드는 것이 이건 전력전자 얘기 같은데 예. 어, 그러니까 이제 스타 포지션으로 하면 버츄얼 그라운드가 한 점에 모이게 되는데 그걸 이제 접지로 하면 커먼 모드 패스가 이제 생기는 건데 예, 예. 접지 설계 스타 포지션 이게 전력전자에서 쓰는 거고요. 디지털에서는 저는 꼭 스타를 써야 되느냐, 뭐 망으로 써야 되느냐 이건데 저는 스타 포지션으로 잘 저는 좀 다른 개념을 교과서에는 스타 포지션이냐 뭐 무슨 여러 가지가 있는데 저는 계층적 설계를 주장하는 편인데요. 칩 설계에서의 그라운드 패키지 PCB 한번 이런 점은 질문에 대한 지금 답은 바로 없는데요. 한번 그 6월쯤 그라운드 가지고 한 2, 3주 할때 한번 얘기해 보겠습니다. 근데 이게 좀 조심스러운 게 그라운드가 디지털 보드냐, 아, 이게 자동차냐, 또는 우주선이냐, 이런 거에 따라서 굉장히 달라져 가지고 케바케인데 한번 그때 들어가서 어, 얘기를 해 보겠습니다. 오늘은 이 하이스피드 디퍼런셜 시그널링에서의 그라운드만 얘기를 했는데요. 그 디퍼런셜 시그널링 그라운드는 하이스피드라서 지금 이 그림에서 보이는 것처럼 접지를 최대한 양 디퍼런셜 페어 좌우에 설치하고 아래에 설치하고 어, 그게 제일 좋은 것 같습니다. 네, 여러분 수고하십시오. 이만 마치겠습니다. 감사합니다.